This is the man in front of you's last chance. Well, maybe not his last chance. If he wins this game, he still has another chance after that, and another chance after that if he keeps winning. But anyways, here's Bisu, who has won the first two games of this set between Firebright Hero and Bisu. And uh, this is a little bit surprising um, to see Firebright Hero two games in the hole, considering he completely stomped on Bisu in the group stages. He's been playing really well against Protoss lately. Admittedly, Tempest, not the best Protoss player uh, in the world. Um, but still, you know, soundly defeating Tempest. And uh, yeah, just a little bit surprising to see Firebite here doing so poorly. And I have to say, Bisu has been playing really, really well. But that's not why he's winning. He's winning because Firebite here is playing really, really poorly. Um, and just making some bad decisions all over the place. I don't know. Maybe uh, I'm... Maybe you have a different interpretation, but uh, that's the way I see it. What do you think, Colorado? I think I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I'm going to take the middle road here. Uh, sorry if I sound like a presidential candidate, but anyway, uh, congratulations, Barack Obama, of course. Woo! Um, <laughs> going back to this game, just had to say that. Just had to put there in the commentary because we can't <laughs> pretend like you know we're like in some ivory tower or some StarCraft tower. Uh, you know, we're, we're all obviously very concerned about what's going on in the world also, and uh, I think the world loves Barack Obama right now. I think it's a um, great time for him to... great time for the world in general. But anyway, um, going back to this game, this is Athena 2. I agree with you, Firebird Hero is uh, not playing that well. Also, Bisu has definitely studied Firebird Hero. He's definitely looked at his game and said, this is what Firebird Hero is good at. He's good at being aggressive if Protoss fast expands. And I'm not going to fast expand in any of these games. I, I will bet you. I betcha that Bisu's not going to fast expand this game. He's going to go for some kind of a tech build here, some kind of early aggression, and it's going to work well, I think, against Firebird Hero, because Firebird Hero, you know, he, he doesn't... He, his defense is a lot worse than his offense, I've noticed. He really doesn't defend very well. Uh, well, seeing as how uh, Bisu's put down his gateway and his assimilator, I'm not going to take that bet. Um, <laughs> Bisu... Uh, sorry, Firebird Hero, though. At least, it looks like he's going to try and uh, wall in this time. I don't know why he hasn't uh, before. Well, game two was a little bit silly, but game one, I have no idea why he didn't try and wall in or something like that. Um, it only makes sense on that map, especially considering, as you mentioned, how well Bisu had been doing. Wow, straight for that core, right as soon as the gateway comes up here. Um, Bisu, yep. you know, he's been teching very, very quickly to Reavers. It's interesting because I guess it kind of makes sense. Firebird Hero hasn't been going for quick vultures, which is which is something that you know, sometimes they'll do. A, the, it's kind of a standard FD build is to go vulture expand, get those mines out, um, and pin the the Protoss in their base with mines. And um, Firebird Hero has not been doing it, so it's worked out incredibly well for Bisu to go for not go for observers first. He's been going for reavers first almost every time. Um, I think I think both games, right. yeah, he's gone for reavers first. So. Yep. Um, let's see if he does the same thing as game one, where he went for the quick robo, um, and just went quick, quick reavers, put some pressure on with the zealots, and then went for quick reavers. Uh, worked for him before, might work for him again. That's a good point there. I think it might be what he's doing, given how fast the core was. Uh, he's getting that range upgrade that is obligatory. Um, and Fiber Hero is going to get the scout in this time. This could make a little bit of a difference. It's going to force uh, Bisu maybe to delay a bit before putting the Robo down. He wants to kill off that SCB. A little dance here in the middle here between the the Zealot and the Marine. Um, Fiber Hero looks like he is actually going to... Well, once again, he's got two, three SCBs on gas, actually. Um, or is that two? That, I think it's actually... Well, actually, it's three. But, um, yeah... <laughs> Anyway, uh, those three Marines chasing the probe. Oh, Fiber here with a micro mistake here. Uh, the probe's going to get in, I think. Yeah, it's going to get in. But uh, oh. I think it's going to get taken care of quickly by that Marine. But it's going to at least see that Fiber Hero hasn't gone for a fast two-fact. So Bisu is going to have a good inkling what's going on, most likely a fast expand. So that's not good there by Fiber Hero. It's just not good. Um, that wasn't necessary at all, I feel. But... Um, Anyway, Firebird Hero is going to get that tank out. He's going to be okay against the at least the early uh, goon. But we're going to see where Firebird, where um, sorry, uh, Bisu is going to go from here. I think he got rid of that SCV, so he's probably going to put that Robo down pretty soon. Yeah, and Firebird Hero, he has a ramp to Jesus. That probe is like somehow surviving two Marines chasing him around the entire time here. Um, finally, it goes down. Firebird Hero conveniently clumping his supply depots together again for these uh, possible fast reavers. <laughs> Uh, oh, I was wrong. In the meantime, I got uh, old. <laughs> sorry. That's all right. Bisu getting an expansion down. 
Um, so that's that's kind of an interesting move, getting that expansion down pretty quickly. Um, anyway, but yeah, this time Firebird Hero has a ramp to defend, so that's going to make things a lot easier on him. He's not going to lose his first tank like he did last time with that ramp to defend. He's already got an SCV on the ramp, unless he ventures off the ramp. That's cool, too. Oh, my God. Let's venture off the ramp, buddy. Nice, nice thinking. Okay, he's going to run back to his ramp, but... Almost, oh, he's almost gonna get his forces in the way of his tank, so his tank gonna go up the oh, ramp, oh, the tank oh takes a couple of hits! Oh. oh, barely saves that. Um, wow. But, uh, losing wow. all of his marines, though, he gets a vulture out, and that's vulture's gonna be able to block, I think, enough for that tank for the moment, but... Uh, Bisu doesn't want to brave that ramp at the moment with only three goons. And there's the mines. So, um, Fiber here actually going standard this time. He's lost all his marines, but really those don't matter too much, so he could do better this game uh, since his build is a little bit different. Yeah, but, you know, just small things like that little bit of impatience there. I don't know why he didn't wait the extra, you know, 15 seconds for the Vulture to join him. That may, what, may, might have made that attack much more successful. I think, obviously, Fire Red Hero would love to have pushed Bisu back into his natural expansion with that push. I think that was the goal, but uh, yeah. he lost all those marines, and for naught. Um, and Fiber Hero, once again, like you said, conveniently placing all the supply depots in a nice box there. Uh, he's going to be able to push out here, but uh, he still needs to be careful. Four goons can snipe off a tank um, if, if Fiber Hero doesn't micro well. And we're seeing him actually float a barracks into Bisu's base. He's going to spot the robotics facility. He's going to know there's a fast expand, and uh, he's going to play accordingly. I think, um, I'm not sure whether where his command center is. Uh, there it is, okay. So he's just started on his command center. Wow, that's actually quite delayed there, I think. Um, because he's actually trying to do this kind of a hybrid build here. He's actually going to do a push before he gets his command center. Usually the Tyrant gets a command center a little bit earlier. So he's going to be try. He's going to try to be aggressive here also and fast expand. We're going to see how this works. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting thing going on here. He's trying to sneak some vultures in as well. Uh, trying to pick off some probes, but there are goons all over the place. He just, out of desperation, I think, plants down mines everywhere. Doesn't He takes out one Dragoon. Maybe, no, not even taking out the second Dragoon. And now his oh, tanks no. are completely, completely out in the open. Bisu can't move his Dragoons out to take out those tanks completely, though. And that's going to save one tank, but the other one does go down. Um, jeez, I... Uh, that was just... Fireman Heroes, just, he's not keeping his forces together. Like you said, he didn't wait for the Vulture in the first time. This time he sent out his Vultures ahead of the tanks, and he couldn't combine those forces very well. Um... He got his vultures pinned in between two groups of dragoons, although he might not have been able to see that coming in any way. But oh man, I just, what is what has come over Fiber right Hero here? He's just making bad decision after bad decision, and maybe uh, maybe you're right. Maybe he doesn't know what to do except rush against Protoss. And um, now that you, you know he, he's trying to, I, I think I just figured it out. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I just want. I just think I, I Eureka. I just figured it out. In, there is a StarCraft balance in the world. Savior and Firebird Hero cannot both do well at the same time. <laughs> Savior is doing well, Firebird Hero has to suck, and vice versa. And Savior has been 6-1 and one recently, so this has sapped away Firebird Hero's power. <laughs> this is this is wow. the true explanation of things, guys. The grand balance between Savior and Firebird Hero. What's this? Bisu going for a early Stargate here. I think that could be fast stork styled uh, a stork styled character oh, mine! that could oh! be a possibility oh i think he wow. saved uh, i that think he nice actually saved there. that river from that mine uh yeah only got one yeah, he on did. um nicely done by bc there but yeah you're right it does look like quick carriers um very stork esque here um but in the meantime he's still got this uh reaver to run around he doesn't look like he's going to take anything out it's hard to fire Scarabs from behind the mineral line. They usually dud in that sort of situation. There's too many mines around too, so it's going to be really difficult for him to pull anything off with his Reaver, I think. Um, and he doesn't have Observer, so he doesn't know that mine is there. Um, this is going to be really tricky for him. He's and Wow, two Stargates. Is that a third Stargate in the top left as well, or is that just another pylon? But either way, definitely uh, going pylon. carriers. Okay, two, two base, two gate carriers. Very, very stork. Uh, Stork S going on here, and um, you know what? He's putting a lot of pressure on Fire right here. I think it could work. 
I think it could too. I mean, he's keeping Fiber Hero back in his base. Fiber Hero doesn't even have a scanner up yet. He's constantly putting up turrets. That's going to slow him down. And, uh, you know, basically that's the name of the game. Slow him down. And it looks like, interesting enough though, Fiber Hero smartly putting down that early armory that has been what Flash has done. And he's going to get that early upgrade that might save him. Just might save him uh, from this carrier rush. But actually, I don't think so. Carriers are going to be out before. Uh, well, at least he'll be able to build Goliath um, with the armory up. But, uh,. We're going to see how that shuttle just has free reign inside the base here. Um, Fiber Hero putting down more facts. Uh, he still has no idea what Bisu is up to at all. There's no w real way for him to figure it out without a scanner. So, uh, you know, he, he's going to be in the dark. He doesn't know whether Bisu is expanding around the map. He doesn't know whether he's going for some kind of fast tech here. Um, really no idea. And Bisu is going to have those carriers out pretty soon. Also getting air weapons there. And uh, Fiber Hero still has that shuttle in the base, man. He's probably going to pop out some Goliaths, actually. He might be able to actually if he does it right, he might be able to take out that shuttle with the first Goliaths as they come out if he decides to make them. But um, that's yeah, going to be his there decision. The, there the it is. There's the pops first out. Goliath. The shuttle running. The Zealot drops out. Wow. Bisu managing to escape with the shuttle. I'm not sure why he didn't escape with nice. it earlier, but um, pretty lucky by Bisu that um, I'm not sure why Fire Hero didn't time it so that both of his Goliaths popped out at the same moment uh, to try and take out that shuttle. But um, anyway. Uh, Fire Hero is at least, he's running some vultures around, so he's going to be able to see if Beast is expanding. He sees that third base going down, but he probably would have expected to go down earlier if, uh, you know, Beast was just goon stomping or something like that. Um, so I, I think he's probably going to suspect something, and he does have Goliaths coming out, so maybe he's sensing these carriers, and he might, and the key to right. beating carriers is to have several Goliaths out. You know, you probably want seven or eight Goliaths out before the carriers even come out. So you can stay ahead of the carriers, basically. Usually coming from behind, the Terran doesn't fare very well trying to catch up with their Goliath count. So this is a good sign for Fire Right Hero. Um, but, you know, it's all going to come down to unit mixtures and micro. It's going to come down to, you know, if he has too many Goliaths, Bisu can make Dragoons and take out the Goliaths with those. If he has, um, you know, not enough Goliaths, the carriers can, can pounce down on them as well. So, um... You know, in some ways, Bisu is going to be kind of controlling the game from here on out, even though Firebird Hero does have uh, the means to defend. Yeah, Firebird Hero uh, knows it's coming. I saw the machine shop spinning. That could only be for Charon because everything else is uh, upgraded. Um, it looks like Firebird Hero. Uh, you know, Fire Hero is going to try to sneak up here. It's not going to work. This is the critical third base. Uh, when you go to two Stargate carriers, you have to be able to secure the third base, usually with a pylon wall. And Fire Hero is actually going to oh. intercept. Oh my goodness, that was oh. a lot of probes. Could be another devastating pr mine, but I think that got at least seven or eight probes there. Um, but uh, still, Fire Hero, I, I think, is not in a terrible position. This is I wouldn't say he's even behind right now. He could decide to push out right now, or he could decide to try to absorb the first blow. It's up to him right now and his game sense. Um, I think actually he is going to push out right now, so he's going to try to kill Bisu off before he gets enough carriers for him to do anything. Oh, the uh, wow, that um, shuttle w w was nowhere around. I guess the shuttle was actually just dropped that Reaver there, but the Reaver goes down, and Fiber Hero could be successful here with his big push. Uh, Goliaths and um, and tanks are quite a powerful combination. Uh, and for only four carriers now for Bisu. Bisu also stopping his carry production. I don't know if that was just uh, his, he's busy somewhere else, but I think he should keep making those carriers. Um, but anyway, Fiber here with a very, very large army. I think he could probably walk over Bisu at this point. Uh, yeah, he actually has a decent amount. It, uh, the one thing is that he doesn't... What is Bisu what? doing? He's destroying his... <laughs> observatory with his carriers. I'm not sure what that was all about. Maybe he was trying to release some trapped dragoons, but here he's coming in, picking off, attacking the tanks with carriers, and this is what I was going to say, is Fire Right Hero didn't have a lot yeah. of tanks, and so it was going to make it easy for him to pick off those tanks, and wow, not enough Goliaths either, actually. So, Bisu doing a really nice job wow, of okay. picking off Fire Right Hero's units. Um, wow. I think he, well, obviously he should have waited until he had a few more tanks and a few more Goliaths, it seems. Wow, I, but I didn't expect him to get bowled over that much. At, at least Bisu has lost um, well, most of his Dragoons. He might even lose that one carrier. Um, no, he's, this is, okay, there's no more Goliath, so he's obviously not going to lose the carrier. But, um, well, he might yet. Wow. But anyway, Bisu lost most of his army, but he came out with all of his carriers, and that means that Fiber here is going to have to try and produce mostly Goliaths from this point. It's going to be really difficult for him to fight this off, and both players pushing out... Fire right here almost getting caught out of position there, uh, having to fight his way back towards the mill here. Wow, this is this is uh, getting intense here, but kind of a low unit comp, low unit battles. But um, that that's it's going to make micro a lot more crucial. 
Yeah, I mean, Athena isn't a, a perfect map for carriers. There are those open spots. There are, of course, those hillocks in the middle of the map. I did say hillocks, but um, and those are useful for the carriers to fly into. Uh, fly <laughs> over, rather, and uh, he's going to abuse these little things over here, yeah. But uh, all the goons are down now, so Fiber Hero can pretty much switch to almost all Goliaths at this point and uh, and have some success there. But uh, Bisu has done a great job with his micro here. Had, I mean, that was beautiful micro there, taking out that army of Fiber Heroes with almost low, no, no losses. I mean, a couple goons went down, that's true, but I mean, he took out a gigantic army. I thought it was a game-ending army, and he just destroyed it somehow. I was just very, very shocked at how easily he destroyed it. I mean, I don't know what the magic was. I think maybe Firebird here was uh, not microing his Goliaths well. I think he was trying to debate yeah. between trying to kill the interceptors and try to kill the carriers, and he didn't get either done. And then, uh, you know, his tanks were staggered. It just, I don't know, just that that was a really ineffective attack, of course. And now Fiber Hero's trying to get an expansion at the upper right. Bisu, though, being smart, scouting around, and he's going to kill off this SEV before he gets it up. He's also got another um, Zealot being annoying here at the right side expansion of Fiber Hero, and this, this one's going to have to get canceled, too. So Bisu has map control. Um, Fiber Hero in big trouble, and yeah, this is what I mean. Map control, so important. He's going to take out this expansion, I think. Yeah, it does look like he's going to take out that expansion. Well, uh, he may have been, or well, maybe not. It looked like he was targeting the command center for a second. But yeah, you know, I'd have to go back and look at it again to tell for certain. I don't actually know, but I suspect that Fire Hero just wasn't microwing his um, his Goliaths very well. I suspect that's why he lost that um, that battle, because he came out of it. He was targeting, Beastie was targeting the tanks with the carriers, and there's nothing he needed to do to stop that, but... He came out with all of his carriers, which he really shouldn't have if Fire Abejo had been paying right. attention, I think. Um, and now even more carriers. And I think that's, that's the critical thing here, is he ha isn't losing carriers. And, um, you know, that's kind of something that you need to do, because if the Protoss slowly holds you off long enough to build up, you know, that 8 to 10 carriers, then um, it's pretty devastating. They can just run around and just absolutely reap havoc. With those, um, with that, with that group of carriers like that, and that's what he's built up. I think he's got six or eight now, getting another base going on as well. It looks like um, Fire here getting another base as well, uh, which is good since we can see he's almost mined out of his main. So, wow, actually getting that expansion killed. That means for the moment, for the next minute or so, Fire here is running off of one base. Ouch. And Fiber Hero in big trouble here. Bisu now going for the harass on the main base. Oh man, Fiber Hero is nothing there. He's got all the supply depots there, and Fiber Hero cannot possibly get his Goliaths back on time to save this. I think Firebat Hero is going to become Firebat Zero and Three pretty soon here. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought this? I mean, this is the Firebat Hero of the past. This is uh, not the Firebat Hero that we've been seeing in this tournament so far, but it's going to be Firebat Hero Zero and Three because uh, there's nothing much he can do here. He's not going to get those Goliaths back. Um, the Deeples are going to go down. Uh, Goliaths so, so clumsy. And Bisu can just run away once they're there. And Bisu has that large horde of forces in the front just waiting to pounce. Uh, once, once the front door is abandoned, you know, once the front front door is abandoned by Fire Red Hero, and uh, yeah, as we're seeing, the carriers just walk away, they just fly away, and uh, you know, Fire Red Hero is just left with a bunch of burning buildings. So I think Bisu just has played very, very well this entire series. I do say Fire Red Hero has played poorly, but Bisu has definitely been aggressive when he needed to be aggressive in this game. Um, the Reaver Harass was good, and the the switch to fast uh, two gate carriers was very smart, I think, or two base carriers. Yeah, I think it was a good move. And yeah, I think Fire Hero is basically um, all but done for at this point. Um, in order to combat the carriers as a Terran, you kind of need to you need to to uh, dictate where the engagements happen. Uh, I mean, you need to make right. sure that the engagements happen in a place where your Goliaths can take advantage of, of their advantages, uh, if that makes sense. So yeah, the fact that Bisu can just run around and harass different parts... And keep his land army in the middle to hold off, um, you know, Fire Rat Hero's counterattacks and that sort of thing. It just, I, I don't see Fire Rat Hero having the the military resources at this point to try and hold this off. He's gonna try desperately to. If he doesn't save this expansion, that is game. He's gonna. This is this is probably the last battle right here. Coming in with his Goliath, Goliath having to force to target the the zealots on the ground. The zealots wow. picking apart the tanks in conjunction with the interceptors, absolutely getting completely picked apart here. Fire Red Hero's army down to two tanks. Scouts wow. in there as oh, well. Scouts. Scouts. Fire Red Hero with the Oh my scouts. gosh. <laughs> yes, humiliation scouts. Nicely done. Yes. Nicely done. Oh man, BC is telling Fire Red Hero, hey buddy, 
You're done for, man. I don't even have to produce more carriers. It's over. Give up already. And Fire Hero, for some reason, doesn't realize it. It's going to take him losing this command sword to some random dragoons for him to have to give up. But I guess you can't blame him since this is the last game in the series. And this is the first time, well, in a long time that Fire Hero has gotten this far in a Star League. So, um, uh, you, well, you think you want to hold on to it. More to scouts. Wow. Three gate yeah. scouts coming I, I'm out just now. Saying, <laughs> yeah. Arena MSL, same situation. He got owned by much a Protoss player in the round of eight. And uh, he was looking decent oh, before yeah. that. I mean, this time I think he was looking even better before. I thought he was going to beat Bisu, to be honest. But oh my god, mass scouts for the humiliation factor. And, uh, you know, nobody nobody encourages bad manners or, you know, uh, ceremonies as much as Firebread Hero does. Because if you beat Firebread Hero, what you want to do is do a ceremony because, you know, he does them to you. So you want to get some uh, com comeuppance there. And Bisu with the scouts is definitely doing that. There's no military reason for him to get the scouts. Firebread Hero also has a tendency of staying in games way too late. That's why much had the time to build a freaking pylon heart. Okay, GG coming from Firebread Hero. I was going <laughs> to say, maybe he was going to just stay in his base, but... Lee Sun Yu and Firebat Hero, Firebat Zero and Three, Failbat Hero. Okay, that's enough. Failbat Hero. <laughs> Bisu moving on to the round of four. Firebat Hero eliminated Zero Three. Wow, that was um, that was pretty spectacular fail. That wasn't. That was a little bit more than a spoonful. That was um, that was a, like a bucket yeah. of fail. Um, Firebat Hero <laughs> can has a bucket of fail. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> And the like scouts. I said, I think it's the grand balance. Uh, yeah, the grand you know, balance of you might Starcraft. have something going there. You might have something going. Although, um, Bisu is, you know, he was the original anti-savior, so um, I don't know about, it's hard to say. Anyway, uh, I think we've pretty much said all there is to say. You know, Fire Hero not playing uh, like a good Terran should against Protoss. Bisu uh, owning him up for it. Yeah, I agree. Good games. Uh, thank you for uh, doing this cast with me. Thank you guys for watching, and this is Cholera and Moltrap signing off.